This video is part of my video course that teaches how to test Java with GUnit and Magita. For other video lessons in this playlist, check the description of this video. You might have noticed that the assert equals assertion that I have used in integer subtraction method does not have a message parameter as we have it in the assert equals assertion of the integer division method. Here we have used a message parameter, but in the integer subtraction method, I have missed this message parameter. If you have noticed this difference, then this is a very good news because you're paying attention and you are already becoming better at using JUnit. Now, this message parameter is optional, but generally it is considered a good practice to include it. If this assertion fails the test, then JUnit will provide its own error message. But if the default error message is not descriptive enough, then you can include additional parameters into your own custom error message. For example, you can include input parameters, the menu end and scepter hand, and for example, expected result into the error message and make it more descriptive. So my error message could look like this. And I will define this variables. And now I can use them to invoke the method under the test. So instead of 33, I will use menu end. Instead of one, I will use subtrahend and will update my assert equals as well. Instead of 32, I will use expected result. And instead of result, I will use actual result. In this case, if this assertion fails the test method, the error message in the test report will have additional information for the person who reads this test report. In this particular test method, it might not look very helpful, but there will be other test methods in your practice when including this additional information into error message will be very helpful. Now, if you have many test methods and each test method has assertions with this uh, kind of dynamically computed message, this might slow down your test methods a little bit. In a small application, you will not even notice the difference, but in a much larger application with many test methods and assertion messages used, developers like to optimize it. And the reason it might slow down your tests a little bit is because this message will get computed every time your test method runs. Whether it passes or fails, this message will always be computed. It gets executed even though it might never be used. So to optimize performance of unit tests, developers like to convert this test message into a lambda. And it can be converted to a lambda this way. Now this message is a lambda function that will be executed only when this assertion fails the test method. Otherwise, if the test is passing, this lambda function will never get executed and no resources will be spent to compute this error message. All right, so again, using this message parameter is optional. You will see many test methods that do not use it at all, but generally it is considered a good practice to provide a short but descriptive error message to help the person who's reading this test report easier understand the reason why this test method has failed. So let's try running this test method and see if it works. And to see this error message printed in the report, I'll need to make this assertion fail the test. So I will intentionally break business logic inside of my integer subtraction method. I will go there and instead of subtraction, I will use addition. I will save changes, will go back to my calculator test and will run my test method. And here we have a custom error message that we have created. 33 minus one did not produce 32. And this information is provided by JUnit. Expected 32, actual 34. Now let's fix our code and use subtraction instead of addition. Let's run our test method to make it pass. And now we have a passing test. All right, so it is working well for us. And now you know how to make the description error message execute only when it is actually needed.